I'm Michael David with High on Sun Valley Sports, and it's my honor to be joined by Peter Schmock, athlete, Olympian, author, coach, teacher. Peter, thanks for being with me. Awesome. I'm loving it. So, you, great. yeah, you're here in, uh, in Sun Valley, Idaho, um, talking, talking about being a life athlete and what, what that means. Give us the, you know, the, the short version of your story uh, and how you got to this point. So the, the background for, for Life Athlete, how it was created, came from my striving for, to be an Olympic athlete. Right. And I made two Olympic teams. And in that journey of making two Olympic teams, I had amazing mentors. I had amazing epiphanies. I had things that this came to me as, as kind of creative insights about what was the best way for me to perform at the highest level. Right. And those mind-body integrated uh, techniques and tools uh, helped to, you know, like, you know, 90% of getting me on one Olympic team and then on two. And then what I noticed is that working with people after that, after I retired when I was 30 years old, the physical techniques were applicable to everyone, not just high level athletes, right, right. but also the mental training and also the awareness and also the breathing techniques and the uh, and the self uh, the self care and being good to yourself and that's not just for making an Olympic team or or trying to be the best CEO uh, that you can be and and, and uh, you know grow your company by thirty percent next year it will be beneficial to those folks but it's it's the parents it's the coaches uh, in the high schools it's the recreational skiers that are baby boom generation sure. for everybody that has a body right. these are techniques and tools of becoming an athlete for life that worked for me and can work for everyone. Right, right. And it's not about pushing yourself as far, as hard and as fast as you can go all the time. No, it's not. And it's counterintuitive. That's how, that was one of the contributing factors for me to making an Olympic team is learning that if I pushed hard and kept putting my nose to the grind, so the, the old phrase, is that I was not going to make it. Right. And I had to learn how to honor what I felt that I needed rest and I needed to rest. Right. And if I needed to push uh, to a lower intensity that day, that that was okay. That that was helping me become a better athlete. Right, right. Not just living this, this uh, kind of in this prison thought of every day's got to be hard. Right, right. And but but you don't just wake up one day and say and with this self-awareness and and understanding your body and understanding what it takes. It's a process, right? It's it's practice. Uh, it's a practice. A practice, right? I think of it. As, I'm still practicing. I mean, there's no as as, as uh, Nike says, there's no finish line. <laughs> right. But along the way, you learn how to you know be aware of yourself. You learn how to understand that some thoughts that you have about yourself are just not true and they're getting you in your way of of living your life more freely and openly and enjoying it and from a physical perspective that you can access it that you feel capable in it that you can you can ski downhill at 80 like you did at 40 or if you're a professional baseball player that you can you know it's, uh, perform at a high level at 40 like you did at 30 right right it's applicable to every single person who has a body right Right, right, and you and and you are doing. Uh, you're offering a chance for people to, uh, everyday normal people like me, to uh, to really find out. Uh, go through that in a retreat. Uh, talk a little bit about about that. So the retreat's coming up in June, uh, from the 12th to the 17th. It'll be in Sun Valley. It's a, I love being back here. The energy here and the people here are just awesome. It's a pretty special. It's been place. 20 20 years since I've been, so it's really like a bit of a homecoming, and. Uh, it's going to be co-taught by my very, very dear friends, Tay and Val. And Tay and Val are, uh, come from Singapore, and they were very high up the corporate ladder, very successful uh, in mainstream uh, corporate affair, and very, very bright at the same time. And they chucked it in, and they got bikes, and they rode their bikes around three different continents over six years. Fascinating. And they wanted to hear what people's dreams were. So they gave talks upon talks and asked questions and tried to get a sense of 
helping people, how to help people reach their dreams. And uh, they've done a TED Talk. Uh, they have moved to Seattle, thank right. goodness for me. I've met them. I always seem to meet really great teachers like Bill Barman and now Tay and Val. Right. And they are just so adept at directing people towards really finding their, their true and best self. And they use meditation, they use intention setting. Uh, there's nothing woo woo about what they do. Sure. They're really badass women <laughs> right, who, are, right. who are really, really smart, but they have hearts of gold and they really want to help people be the best they, they could possibly be. Right, right. So they're leading the part that's more of the internal part, the, the mental and the emotional part, mm -hmm. the meditation. I'm handling more of the physical. Uh, part of it, the physical training tools, but we meet. We also meet in the middle all, as well. So it, it's the total integration of your mind and your body and your spirit, in one way that gives you the tools of being able to think. Hey, I can move into this day, this next day, right. with a different approach that maybe will make my life work better for me physically and beyond. Sure, and and you don't have to be a, a top level elite athlete no. to to really. Uh, gain from this No, we had, experience. in the last retreat, we, we had a retired uh, football player, NFL football player, who hadn't been in his body working out, doing anything physical for decades. Right. And we had a 19-year-old girl who is a strong, strong CrossFit mm -hmm. gal. That's and right. each one of them came out of that retreat with a better understanding of themselves. She came out with a better understanding of the power she had within right. and of her voice, and she could express herself and have confidence around that, not just lifting weights. And he found out that, wow, I have a body that I really love being in, and I'm in learning how to go about reclaiming what I've lost yeah. and doing it in a way that really feels good, that's not back to the, you know, the NFL, you know, two right. day sure, training. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that was the best part. We're stuck with this this body we, we've got right here. Yeah. We have it this until the, the last day. Right. So, you know, why don't we be good to it and learn about it and learn about how our mind inter integrates with it right. and how that we can be our best selves. And whatever that means to you, whether you're, you're trying to make an Olympic team or you, you want to walk around the block and have more fun. Right, right. Um, t talk a little bit about, you know, why, why, you, why you do this. Why, what, 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 what motivates you to, to want to help other people uh, be, reach their potential? I think that it was primarily out of the fact that I saw how off base I was in my thinking and how I treated myself and how I so much got in my own way. And it really, my potential athletically was compromised early on because of that. Right. So the retired attorney that I work with now or the CEO or the 19 year old, it's all about helping them get through those roadblocks that are not really roadblocks mm -hmm. and learning about their bodies in a way that has a little more compassion in it and a little bit more, uh, you know, maybe we'll have to wait another day if you're right. too tired. And to be able to really access a part of them that they didn't know they had or they still have. And uh, I'm very grateful to see those people move and to, to live their lives in the corporate world or the CrossFit world or whatever world they want to live in right. uh, to, to do it with more enjoyment, with more compassion to themselves, with a greater sense of capacity and capability that I am capable. I can climb up this mountain. I can be in this boardroom and give a talk. And I know I'm going to have butterflies, but I know how to calm myself beforehand because I've learned these techniques right. so applicable to everybody. I just I want to see people succeed and realize their potential. Yeah, yeah. Um, did were you? Did it come easy to you? Um, did, did or in terms of that self awareness and understanding that you you shouldn't push, push, push all the time. I kept running into the right book at the right time, the right teacher at the right time. Right. And it was hard. I mean, it's, it's not, it, it, there have been some really difficult times, but it's been a practice that I have absolutely been gifted with. I mean, I've been gifted with the ability to be able to learn about myself and have patience with myself. It took a while to do that. Sure. And now to be able to translate to help others. And, and that, that was a gift to me. Right, right. And to be introduced to Bill Bowerman, the inventor of the Nike shoe, and what he taught me, that was a gift. Right. So uh, with these gifts, I, you know, I don't feel that I have to go out and tell everybody about it. 
but it's what I do and it's what I really enjoy doing. And I love to see people going, aha, I get it. That's awesome. Right. I'm getting it now. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yep. And, and you see this, whether it's, uh, you know, a Jamie Moyer who pitched forever in the, in the major leagues or that 19-year-old or, or someone, you, you, you can see the same, uh, the same self-awareness that then allows them to, to really reach their potential. Yeah, and there's no difference. I mean, seeing Jamie pitchers, you know, world record, you know, 49-year-old uh, oldest pitcher to, pit, to win a, a starting game, to start a, a baseball game, uh, I, there's no more enjoyment than that than, than seeing uh, the 19-year-old do a movement where she doesn't hurt her shoulder at the same time. Right, right. That she keeps thinking that she has to lift so much weight that her shoulder hurts that if she, if she does that, that that equates good as opposed to no, it doesn't. It right. equates that you're hurting yourself and you're not going to get to the next level. So there's another way. So I, I, I enjoy the heck out of right. either one of those two stories. And you were talking about off camera about after the, you had a, the similar retreat in Molokai that the, the, the light went on for a lot of the people that had participated in it a little bit after, like, oh, this, this is where, what right. I'm about, right? right. That, and I think a lot of people came in knowing that they wanted to change something, knowing that there was something that they wanted to explore that they haven't, something that was getting in their way right. of being in their bodies to be more successful lifting weights to uh, being a better salesperson uh, in the tech business, that was one woman, uh, or how they're living their life. Are they living their life authentically to the level that they want to live it? Or, is, or are, they, are they in a belief system that is hurting them? And everybody walked away with something different, a nugget or two or three, that was not just little, but it was big, like, aha, man, I can't but wait to get back out into my life right. and apply this and use my new voice of expressing who I am for the 19-year-old and using my body as a, as a 70, uh, almost 70-year-old and being able to, to get past those barriers that right. they thought were there that we just gave them the opportunity, asked them some questions, had them do some drills, and they started realizing on their own that yeah. I can go beyond this. Right, and, and it seems to me I get a sense that you know, so many of the regimes or the programs out there are kind of a one-size-fits-all, this is what you do, but we're all so different, and, and it, whether it's our age, our physical fitness, our size, uh, our stamina, right? the, you, you, this is individualized, isn't it? It, it always, always has to be to maximize the results for each and every person. Right. You know, what's going to be good for the 70-year-old is not going to be good for the 19-year-old. They can share certain principles, mm -hmm. doesn't matter what age there are. Right. But to move forward in life, to if you believe in just do it, the, the, the problem is nobody ever gave us the how. Right. This retreat and Life Athlete is the how. Exciting. To just do it. So everybody is going to want to just do something different but the how is foundational to everything right right so again june 12th june 12th to 17th in sun valley yep zenergy uh limelight be so great working with both here of them. at the limelight and hotel and the limelight and we'll be outside as well and uh, we're planning the venues uh up. Wonderful. Well, I'm glad our community is going to get to experience that and uh, get you back up here in Sun Valley. Um, it's 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 great to have you. Great to visit with you, and learn about the the life athlete. You know, it's easy to forget when we're going through the grind of life that <laughs> it's an athletic pursuit. But uh, we we need to be at our yep. at our best. We have to be in our bodies. There's <laughs> no escaping it. So might as well find the easiest way. Great. Thanks, Thank Pete. You. My guest has been Peter Schmock. Life athlete, Olympian, author, coach, teacher. Check out more about the retreat at lifeathlete.com and learn how you can reach your athletic potential. I'm Derek Agnew, general manager of Zenergy Health Club and Spa, and I want to take you inside and show you what we've done with our new Pivot Studio, which is going to blow you away. The therapists tell me that Pivot really is the game changer. It fills that final gap that we were missing at Zenergy, things they could not do in our main gym. 
The recent addition of the Pivot Studio has meant wonders to me as a physical therapist. I can now take care of the most vulnerable post-operative patient, but now I can include programming that challenges the most elite athlete. I moved out to Idaho four years ago. So I met a lot of people and, and I really, really like it here. In New York, I was always sort of introverted. When I came out here, that no longer was me. I became extroverted because the people here are so friendly and warm. You know, if you don't have something like that that brings you into other people's lives, it takes a long time to get to know people. 